The majority of birds we reviewed on our channel came from the United States, but we have already made a few videos about the birds from Europe. As engineers and visionaries on another continent pushed the boundaries of aviation too and came up with truly unique aircraft that are well worth your watch. Today, we'll talk about another bird that has its roots in the country of fine wine, high fashion, and highly sophisticated engineering. Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and in this video, we will explore how a joint venture between an Italian scooter company and an American business jet manufacturer created one of the fastest, most comfortable, and, importantly, highly cost-effective birds for small business aviation. The Piaggio P180 Avanti First of all, I would love to thank everyone who watched our video about the Beach Starship. I fully agree with everyone who admitted its beauty in the comments. But I also saw many people comparing it to our hero for today. It's not just the difference in specs. While researching this bird, I clearly saw what made it outlive the starship. But first, we need to wind the clock back to when it all began. So, P-180 is a result of a rather intricate partnership. Italian Piaggio and American Learjet. Since 1884, Piaggio had been one of the largest rolling freight manufacturers in Italy, but it switched to aviation at the beginning of World War I, producing more than a dozen different aircraft, including the unusual catapult-launched floatplane P-6. By the way, remember we mentioned the scooter company? Well, Piaggio had many branches, and one of them made the world-famous scooters Vespa, which you might have seen in the classic Hollywood movie called Roman Holiday. But let's return to the skies and move closer to the present day, 1982. Piaggio was working on a new aircraft, their first of this kind, and they were seeking help with production. While a few established manufacturers offered assistance, Learjet, with its experience in business aviation, was the perfect fit. The deal was sealed, and both companies began working on the new model, the P-180. Unfortunately, soon Learjet faced financial issues and quit the Avanti project. However, the P-180 still has a few structural parts reminiscent of Learjet. Can you spot them? Yeah, look at those massive ventral fins, almost identical to the Lear 45. Well, despite these setbacks, Piaggio was in the final stages of developing the Avanti and decided not to abandon the project. So, in September 1986, the Piaggio P-180 Avanti made its first flight. Unlike the Starship, the P-180 received both European and American certification relatively quickly in 1990. Probably because of sticking with conventional materials for the fuselage, but we'll get back to that later. Because most of the clients were based in America, Piaggio opened a facility in Wichita, the home of general aviation in the United States. However, due to poor logistics, Avanti Aviation Wichita ran out of money in just three years, and all manufacturing halted. At this point, the story could have ended like dozens of futuristic projects of the late 80s and early 90s. But a wealthy businessman came to the rescue. Piero Ferrari, the son of the legendary Enzo Ferrari, invested in Piaggio Aero Industries, allowing them to improve their manufacturing process. As a result, the P-180 Avanti once again became available for purchase, and remains so to this day. Before we dive deeper into all the engineering novelties and specs of this bird, I wanted to bring your attention to the interesting timing of the P-180's development. Piaggio filed a patent for the P-180 in 1982, the same year Beach contracted Rutan to work on the Starship. The P-180 first flew in August 1986, but the Starship NC-1 prototype took to the skies earlier, in February of the same year. Piaggio received certification in 1990, while the Starship was certified in 89, but sales began in early 90. Isn't it strange that such similar designs were tested and built in the same year? Also, the FAA delays for the Starship look suspicious. Don't you think someone could have influenced them? All right, all right. It might sound like a crazy conspiracy theory, so I'm not going to delve deeper into it. However, I would love to hear your opinions in the comments below. The key requirements for the Avanti were dictated by the rising economy of the late 80s, fast and comfortable for at least six passengers. You know, to fit all the upper executives of any Fortune 500 company at that time. 
That requirement resulted in quite a large fuselage, around 47 feet long and 13 feet high. The P-180 has a wingspan of 46 feet, similar to the Piper PA-31. But the fuselage has quite an interesting shape. The cockpit and tail are much smaller in cross-section than the cabin. While this design provides more space, it also contributes to the amazing aerodynamics of this bird, which we will talk about later. Probably the main difference between the Avanti and the Starship is the lifting surfaces, the wing and the tail. For the wing, yes, both have canards, but they are completely different. The Starship had a variable canard, while the P-180 had it fixed. And to me, the Avanti has a proper wing on its nose, as it has flaps and deploy during landing. Also, like any aircraft with a canard wing, the P-180 has excellent stall prevention features. Another notable reason for placing a canard on the Avanti was to push the main wing back closer to the tail. This design allowed for a larger cross-section in the middle of the fuselage, all for the comfort of VIP passengers. Additionally, placing the wing so far aft of the cabin greatly decreased noise and vibrations, another feature highly valued by wealthy passengers. It's worth mentioning that, unlike the Starship and many other manufacturers who chased the trend for composites in the early 90s, Piaggio likely felt that there were enough innovations in one project and stuck with aluminum. And that's right, as composites weren't the ultimate answer. Even made from conventional materials, the Avanti was capable of hitting up to 400 knots for short distances, while its comfortable cruise speed was around 340 knots. Isn't that impressive? For a big bird like the Avanti to achieve such speeds, it needed a pair of powerful engines. And there wasn't a better option than the trusty Pratt & Whitney Canada PT6A, delivering 850 horsepower each. Also, there's no better engine than the PT-6 when it comes to pushing the air, not pulling. See, the PT-6, being a turboprop, needs lots of air fed into it. When it comes to pulling it in with the propeller, you need to suck it in with the prop and then turn it around inside. That's why there is an air intake located underneath the engine, like on this beautiful Pilatus. But the Avanti has these large nacelle inlets that supply plenty of air, so the PT-6 can show its full performance. The range is where this bird really shines. See, the aim for this plane was to be closer to private jets than turboprops. Speed-wise, it surely is, but in terms of fuel consumption, it's much closer to single-engine turboprops like the Pilatus or TBM. Let me explain. If we take the older Citation, it's a seven-seater with the same 400 knots max speed and 41,000 feet ceiling as the Avanti, but the Cessna burns 160 gallons per hour. On the other hand, the Pilatus also has seven seats but cruises at 280 knots at flight level 300 and burns 60 gallons per hour. The P-180 got the best of both worlds. So, at flight level 410 and 65% power, it burns just around 90 gallons per hour. Can you name any other executive seven-seater with twin PT-6 engines that can do that? Just to add, 65% power will still probably be around 330 knots. So, yeah, we don't skimp on speed here. To put it in a practical perspective, the P-180 range of 1,500 nautical miles will easily get you from Seattle to Dallas if you're in the US or through the whole Europe, from Spain to Sweden. Practically no aircraft of this size can achieve such great fuel efficiency and such range. Piaggio claimed that while having other characteristics on par with business jets of that time, the Avanti burns nearly 50% less fuel while cruising. Meticulous aerodynamic testing and engineering is not always about raw speed. Sometimes it's about saving you lots of money in the long run. By the way, speaking of money, First of all, there are three variants, the Avanti, Avanti 2, and Avanti Evo. First is the one we were talking today. The second is an updated version with newer PT-6 modifications and updated avionics. And the third one has new engines, bigger tanks, new props, new inglets, and last but not least, new lights. However, there aren't any deal-breaking differences between the first two. So, if you are fine with a pre-owned P-180 from the early 2000s, it will cost you around $2 million, while a new one, like the Avanti Evo, will set you back around $7.5 million. 
As we wrap up this video, I can confidently say that the Avanti managed to balance innovation and practicality, and that, in my opinion, is what allowed it to outlive the competition. Anyhow, I would love to hear your opinion about this plane in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the clouds. Fly safe, and until next time.